many things that we need to do in India to transform it into what it's capable of, making sure that we also remain at the top of the table, make sure that we enjoy the quality of life that we all entitled to. We need to do many things. And one of the main things that we need to do is also to find out the way we move around. As we have seen globally, people always, one of the things that you cannot take them away from is travel. People want to eat, people want to travel all the time, if there's a choice. And therefore, making sure that transportation, the logistics is also improved in India, we need to do many things, and one of them I'll just confine today is railways. As you know, if you have the vision of India, I think eventually just adding to the GDP may not help. We want to really improve the quality of life. And in that, what we really need to do is to do many things put together. And that's one thing that can really transform India is railways. Why? Because this is one thing which can attract maximum investment. So that's how we we'll create huge manufacturing. We can create employment. We can make sure that a railway system is improved so much that people will be able to travel. Travel not just for pleasure, but they will also add being business and travel itself is business, as you know. Any one tourist brings in about 15 different kinds of jobs on-site, off-site. So railways, we decided to make it as an engine of growth and therefore we have make, decided to invest about $142 billion into the next five years into the railways. And where are we investing the money? We are investing into customer service, whether it's food, whether it is linen, whether it is reservation system, when you book the ticket, or interiors of the train, or the railway stations, all of that put together. Many of things are work in progress, many of things have already happened. What is stated now, what I'm going to mention, what I'm mentioning to you now, is something which I mentioned in my budget. 103 of those budget announcements are implemented and we have made some improvement. I'm not happy, I'm satisfied, but not really happy because I need to do a long way to go. But we made a beginning for sure, and that beginning is clear, we want to move in that direction. Unfortunately, Somebody, I was talking to somebody, I was, he was asking me, when you think things will really happen? I said I, was, I would have been very happy if I was in the noodles business or in an instant tea business, so I could deliver immediately. But this is something like this, it takes time to happen, but we are moved into it. So what are we doing? We are first of all investing money into areas where there will be quick benefits will come. When I say quick, it's about three to five years. Like decongesting airline, uh, the railway lines, creating safety, making sure that a customer has improved, transparency is brought about, and the whole system is changed. And therefore, we have started making that investment. Unfortunately, for the last several decades, we never invested money into the railways that we should have. As a consequence, we have lost the share of traffic to the road. We have actually deteriorated the services. Therefore, now the consumers also feel, why should I pay more? Because I'm not getting value for my money. In fact, that's, not part, that's partially true, because the railway fares are really, really uh, underrated. So we really need to put that into place. But that's one point. So we decided to invest. Now where do you make the money for investment? So we didn't have a, much of a resources coming from the government, which is the central budget. So I said first time, we'll not just keep blaming the finance minister, which has been a normal practice for not doing anything. I can point out fingers to the finance minister. So I said I will rather change that. We decided to invest money from taking it from outside. Life Insurance Corporation, we got 1,50,000 crores which will be investing into the railways. In the next five years moratorium, 30 years repayment. Multilateral agencies are also giving us money for that type. And we have seen that unless you invest, you will not get a type of benefits you want. China is a good example. I just gave you a figure of $142 billion. I know many people are asking me why so much. China has been investing $140 billion year after year for lost so many years every year. So when you make that investment, you get the outcome. So you cannot expect a magic in which without investment you should get something like this. I wish I was, my, I am, because in the government people say I'm in Sarkar, I wish I was that Sarkar who could do this magic. But I'm not unfortunately that Sarkar, the famous magician of the world. And therefore, we really need to find out how do you make that investment. We investment, we need money, money had to be followed from somewhere, we did that. In last few months itself, we have actually sanctioned contracts for 40,000 crores to one of the world's largest companies like GE and Alstom, which will create a huge ecosystem, investment in Bihar, one of the backward states of the country, so that they will get employment, the ecosystem will get developed, and the entire ecosystem will also bring in that type of a 
manufacturing activity into the part of a global supply chain. So we are doing that. We are also making sure that we create a proper regulatory framework. I mentioned about a fair and freight. We need to have a proper rational means of deciding what should be the fair and what should be the freight. So we are creating independent mechanism which will actually address this issue. We are also making sure that the interiors of train are fully changed. We are developing 400 stations, existing stations, which will go vertical and there will be, I got a design of one of the stations. If you look at it, you will not believe that it's not even an airport because this is better than that. But that's something which we need to implement. But we are already under implementation of this program, 400 stations, completely transparent basis. I mentioned you one more thing. I'm looking at the clock all the time, is transparency. And the transparency is something which is so critical. As a minister of railways, people always wanted to be ministers of different portfolios because it's something we call it power. I thought the power is not important. What is important is the delivery of the services to the people. So how did service to the people delivery ultimately takes place? It must happen at a place where there is an interaction of per person with the government official. So I delegated all my powers to the general managers, to the division level managers, and now some of them to the station masters as well. Why? Because that's the cutting edge where the people meet the real service providers. And if you don't have the powers, how can make them accountable? So power has been given not in last one year that I have been a minister, more than a year. Not a single tender has come to me, which is to be the normal business of the minister, which is no longer there with me. Secondly, we are now going into the next level of power has been given. Now we'll bring accountability. So we are creating key result area for each of the functionary. And he has to deliver on those areas in the parameter that has been decided for him. So we are going ahead with that and that will also bring in transparency. In fact, all the tenders and all the contracts will eventually, not by end of this year, will be completely on e-tendering e platform. So there is no more possibility, we'll bring in more transparency, including employment. I know there is a problem, people always used to be hoodwinked by the so-called touts by saying that I will offer you a job. I don't know how, but you know, we could only get money because he was offering something which he could never do. Therefore, we are bringing in completely transparent system of examination, online examination. And that will also bring in, reduce the kind of corruption. Promotions, posting, appointments, were all part of that. That also we have created a very transparent process. So transparency is something which is people always look for, which is an integral part of the good governance, which our Prime Minister also believes, we believe in very strongly. So we are trying to do that. So we are trying to completely change the way the railway, believe, uh, railway is operated. By doing this, what's my vision, if you want to know, by 2030? Why 2030? Because I feel for a, something like railways, we have to run the railways, we have to keep on expansion, we have to keep on modernizing, we have to make sure that the human resource, which my friend just was saying, the largest employer, how the human resource is developed at the same time, so there are very complex issues to be done. In any case, a new line to be put up takes three to five years, and therefore we have decided that we will now have five-year cycle. First cycle, five years, which I already mentioned in my budget speech. Next five years would be, probably will be investing double this amount, or we should invest. And that is what will bring in some sort of a parity to global standards. But I don't not be happy only with coming out with parity with global standards. I will rather be happy with our railway system should be one of the best in the world. And if that to happen, we really need another probably a few more years after that. And therefore, I am creating a vision for 2030 in which service will be globally benchmarked. Safety will be as good as what we have based in the world. In fact, I've already tied up with Japan for that. Whatever is a investment that we make in railways will generate huge employment, also create a huge economic impetus. In my opinion, railway alone will be able to add 2.5 to 3% to GDP as we go along. Also, the target is that we must not only improve the efficiency of rail operations, but also reduce the cost of transportation. Because unless we are globally competitive, input costs have to be competitive, and one of the major input costs going to be for Make in India for any other major economic program is how do you make business with least cost possible. And therefore, all this is aimed for that. So I am very sure that if you continue like this, what we are doing today, by 2030, we'll be able to bring in real change. One last point, I'm trying to work in on a very different type of an accounting system for the country, for the railways to begin with. We start with budgeting, expenditure, output, and outcome. If you can integrate costing, bookkeeping, 
management information system, management accounting into one, will be able to derive maximum benefit from the government expenditure that we incur. Because again, what's going to be critical is, how do you make sure that every rupee spent in India, public expenditure, results into at least one rupee benefit for the system. And that's why the change of accounting system will bring in not only transparency, accountability, but also bring in efficiency to the system. Thank you very much. Thank you.